So, I didn't announce it. I don't think I announced it, what episode we were on last one. So, maybe you can do us justice, do a better job. Well, this is a big one. 26. That's six months, dude. Six months. Dude. Six months of that. Consistent. Con- very consistent. This is I the mean, most consistent thing in my life right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, it's funny. So that, so that means as we've met. Uh, so we've met, uh, what, 13 times, is it? No. Yeah, 13 times because we do two. Yeah. So it's been, that's crazy. It's pretty cool, man. It's yeah, been, goes, it goes by ride, fast. Bro goes by fast man yeah 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 well it's like this like when i texted you i was like do we record this like tomorrow or 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 i think it was for the following day you're like yep i was like god two weeks dude it's gone it's just done i know i you know what's weird it's like even with this covid stuff going on and everything's different time is flying yeah dude i totally agree I totally agree. So, I don't know. Has it eased up anywhere with you, with where you're at? Uh, as far as restrictions and stuff? As far as like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, just this past weekend, they went more lenient. I, I don't know what it's called, uh, phase one or two or three or okay. tier one or whatever. But now I think they allow indoor dining to oh, a certain awesome. capacity. Okay. And some other stuff. Um, so yeah, they did loosen it up a little bit. How about Good. you? Um, I think we've been at a pretty low level um, as far as what we can do. I think the more stringent stuff has been in like New York and Florida. As far as I know, it's been like still like they closed down indoor dining. Um, but I mean, I can go and get something to eat inside i wear a mask inside walk three feet take the mask off and eat (laughs) yeah 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 so i mean that's still going on i just met with three of my friends um from my childhood the other the other week we went right into the bar ate the everything was spaced out and everything's going accordingly you know but sure um it's been pretty lenient in in virginia so i'm kind of happy about that but yeah my my wife being in the hygiene field, she's opening up people's mouths, and all that kind of stuff. It's obviously still super, um, you know, stringent as far as what they can do. And then it kind of makes her nervous a little bit and it makes me nervous a little bit because what she deals with every day and she comes home and then um, like she's kind of like confined to her friends at work. And like me, you know what I mean? That's where she feels most comfortable. That's the bubble. That's the bubble. It's like friends at work. Cause if they've got something, then so does she, but we'll leave it inside the bubble and then me. So, um, I think that's been kind of tough as far as that. Yeah. My kids are back in school now. Um, but it's like Tuesdays and I'm sorry, Mondays and Tuesdays from, uh, seven forty-five to eleven thirty, so that's it. It's a half that's day. Quick. Do y'all yeah. drive then to school? Yeah, I do. Um, okay. To the junior high, yes. Um, grade school is a block away, so my other son goes to grade school. And he, the other day, I'm like, "Hey, man, you want me to walk you to school?" No, you guys are embarrassing. <laughs> <He> just. <laughs> And he just, embarrassing. I'll show you yeah. embarrassing, son. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, let's fire it up. Yeah. The uh, Rungin Mono Show. Yeah. Uh, do we do the trivia question now or after? So we'll be answering last week's, right? I think we did it wrong last time. So I oh, think this we, week we'll be uh, answering last week's puzzler. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah. the one that I... No, the one that you... Wait. Yeah. Yeah, I did it last week. Well, so, what's the answer, minutes. Matt? Tell us the freaking answer, dude. All right, We're so last week I said, hey, week. what... <laughs> yeah, so what did I say? It was in the 80s. Suzuki had a system called SACS, which stands for Suzuki Advanced Cooling System. And 
it was basically oil air cooled. So they had like a radiator for the oil? Yeah, it was strictly oil cooled. Okay. Oil air cooled. So it had a big ass oil cooler on the front um, and so forth. Cool. Okay. I, I was like thinking like like a I was kind of thinking if if I were to answer it it was going to be like Suzuki's awesome controlled suspension or something <laughs> like it had to mean something to do with suspension. Yeah. So cool. Well, I think they uh thought very highly of their oil cooler. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think one one thing was from a performance standpoint is like they were able to be punched out a lot mm. because the cylinder walls are pretty thick, I believe. Uh, yeah. No cooling jackets or anything like that. So, okay. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. There you go. Anybody who can comment below, you win. <laughs> you win. You can rest easily, sleep. Uh, Delicately, you 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 have won. That's it. All right, That's so it. you have one for this uh, this episode or what? So, okay, I do. So, I do. So, I do. So the question is super easy, right? When cornering on a motorcycle, which tire takes? upwards of 75 percent or which tire rely or which tire yeah which, which tire takes up almost 75 percent of the actual traction that is used on the bike when cornering front or rear tire which one takes up almost 75 percent of the traction like which one's being used almost 75 percent during your cornering we'll, we'll leave it at that i i really threw my corners man <laughs> 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 awesome cool so okay if you want to find out the answer tune in next week to the broken moto show episode 27 that's right bingo okay so matt once and for all fire us off this episode all right guys Special episode tonight, episode yeah. 26 of the Broken Moto Show. We've been doing this for six months consistently every week. Six months. Yeah. Consistent. So that's half a year, obviously. But anyway. <laughs> All right. So so I'm Matt right. from howtomotorcyclerepair.com, and this is my buddy Cody from Motorcycle MD, and we answer uh, your tech questions that you submit to a certain email. And Cody, what's that email? That email is askbrokenmoto at gmail.com. That is where you contact us. That's where you send us your pictures, your videos. Um, tell us what's up. You know, that's where tech questions go to live here on the channel. Askbrokenmoto at gmail.com. Send us, um, actually, in the subject, make sure you put your year making model if possible, if it's motorcycle related in the subject. I mean, in the, in the description, try to be descriptive. That's what, you know, um, tell us where the bike's been, how old it is, your, um, how many owners has it, has it had, the mileage on the bike is super helpful. What have you done? What have you haven't done? Um, again, pictures, video, guys, it's super helpful for us. If you got them, send them, figure it out. If you don't know how to put a picture inside of an email, then you have a different issue in 2021. You know, so that's how that's how you get um, on the show. That's how you contact us. Yep. That's it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love our silences. <laughs> cool. Yep. That's it. <laughs> so I I uh, did the uh, intro and yeah. you got to do the first question. Huh? I do. Okay. Because so I, I, I really I really want you to take this one. So. <laughs> Great, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why. Yeah. Episode twenty six, question number one. We have a nineteen eighty three C B one thousand custom. Good day, fellow motorcycle men. My bike has started making some what seems like chattering or clattering down the bottom half of the motor. I've adjusted both cam chains. There are two on this bike. If 
It only makes noise at idle speeds around 1100 RPM. When I increase the RPM, it instantly goes away. I have checked a couple of forums and some have said that it is the primary chain. I don't believe it since the noise seems to be coming from the left side. So sitting on the bike, left side, outermost part of the crank. I ran the bike with the cover off, excuse me, and it seems to be really loud with the, with yeah that left cover off. Um, you, you can really hear it there. I do have experience working on Hondas from the 80s. It seems to me that it is not the primary, meaning the chain. I think, Matt, you talked about this in one of your motor rebuild videos on the 750. A primary chain that connects what? The crankshaft to the main shaft? Counter shaft, right? The counter shaft, you're Which right. Which is the, the clutch. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a stethoscope. I have put a, steth a stethoscope to it, and it does not seem to be coming from the bottom or middle of the crankcase where primary is located, that primary chain he's talking about. This is that noise that you hear on a lot of the old single cam 750s that just sounds like there's a pocket of change inside the motor. It's, that's that primary chain. I talked to a Honda mechanic and it seems, and he seems to think that there is a spring in the timing mechanism, which could be stretched out and needs replacing question mark. Other than that, the bike runs great, has very good compression. Carbs are clean and synced. Any ideas on what else it may be? Michael from, we don't know. Okay. So I, uh, I don't have I I I I I'm, I don't have the most time wrench time on the CB one thousand. They're actually kind of a rarity to find in good shape that are like worth working on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but it's very similar to the dual overhead cam when it, when when Honda switched to the electromagnetic charging system. This all kind of falls in line with that. So what I'm going to tell you may or may not be true, um, but I'm going off of what, uh, you know, my, what's the term when you have like memory that is based off of like images, what's it called? Photographic, photographic memory, based on my photographic memory. Anything on the left-hand side of the bike. So you're talking about what I think the mechanic was talking about is the advancer unit on the back side of the ignition pulser plate. So Matt, these have what looks like a point system, but functions like, a, like an electronic ignition point system. They still have an advancer unit on the backhand side of that right. plate. So that's the only thing I can think of that that mechanic would be talking about. But that means you're talking about the advancer unit going buck wild behind this plate, causing chattering for you to hear audibly, which I've never heard of in my life. What I think it is, is I believe that the starter sits pointing towards the left-hand side of the bike, which means that the starter clutch is also left-hand side of the bike, which is common on some of the older, like 80, maybe 90s uh, VT1100 VT V-Twins. They had to start a clutch on the left-hand side versus the right. So it's very possible. This is everything that I was kind of chewing on in my head while I was reading this email. So your starter clutch is nasty, right? It's just, it's a bad system, okay? It works. But it's a bad system. And the starter clutch has like these rollers and these springs and these dowels inside. Matt, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. You're, you're frozen though. I can hear your audio, but your video's frozen. So what I was going to say was that on the left-hand side of the bike, he's thinking our mechanic had told him that a, a stretched spring system on his left-hand side that had to do with the timing of the bike. Yeah was causing this chattering which i just think is very doubtful because he's talking about the advancer unit so i think on the left hand side of where he's talking about it's like an advancer unit like you would see on a point system 
Right. Um, but it's just a little bit different, you know, and there's tiny springs and I, I can't see that shattering and the bike running well, you know, that means to be trying to advance the whole time. Uh, you know? Yeah. You would have erratic timing, it'd, which would be would, awful. And you'd have erratic uh, idle speed. Your, your idle would hunt. Oh dude, all kinds of crazy stuff would be going. Oh yeah. On. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't fully agree with that. Um, what, what I do think what I, from what I believe is what my brain is telling me from the images that I've seen of the bike and working on one, seeing one, and I believe that the starter faces out the left-hand side of the bike. This unit is equipped with a starter clutch. This starter clutch is the same type of starter clutch that's in like the old 350s, the old 450s. It's a very janky system. It's like a, a disc that's bolted into the back of this gear that has rollers and springs and retainers and all these things that like jumble around when the starter is spinning. And the bolts, there's like three or four bolts, of Phillips head bolts that hold that thing on. And those, those come loose all the time. They come loose all the time. Whether you would hear that at idle, I don't know. But if that starter is coming out the left-hand side of the bike, you can stethoscope all you want. It's not going to be what you think it is, which is the advancer unit. You can check to see if it's tight, if it's on there tight, but something is traveling through to get that noise. And if that starter starters on the left-hand side, that means it's attached to that gear. I think that he should look into the starter clutch system of this bike. That's my only advice on it. I have a video on starter clutches or the 350 starter clutch, which is very similar. If you want to get an idea, we'll put a link in the description below um, of what it's kind of going to look like, but it's just a really janky system. And that could be where the fumbling is being heard from i think so it's the three roller setup yep yeah okay it, it, it made me more but yeah yeah well yeah at least three yeah yeah um i honestly don't have much to add because it seems like he's done a really good job of diagnosing this yeah i agree. Um, I, agree. I mean i you know sometimes if your carbs are out of sync and if your mm -hmm. engine is not tuned you'll get some rattling or some noises at low yeah. RPM. Uh, his but he RPM, covered all that. Yeah. yeah, his RPM is not low, and he says that they're synced and everything. So I, I don't know, man. Um, I guess you're you're leading him in a good direction with the starter yeah. clutch in the left side. Let um, us know, Michael. Yeah, I mean, it, at this point, maybe take all that apart and see what you find. I mean, yeah. you know. I mean, like I said, he, he can check for loose stuff, but there's no, like, big whomping spring on the back of that timing unit it's just like you before in point systems yeah i mean so this this is like a similar setup to like a dyna pretty much exactly you, know, you, you remove the points hunt. but you, you still need the me mechanical advance for the pulser correct um but yeah if those springs were loose man you would have runnability issues because mm -hmm. that timing would be hunting yeah so i mean there's a chance that the advanced units like wanting to like hop off but i mean it's so rare you know, just go in there. It's like a 10 millimeter, six millimeter bolt. Tighten it up. See what it looks like. But I would check the starter clutch. And I'll, and I'll stop it there. Cool. Cool. So we have a beer fund that we use as a support system from you guys. You know, can we need your support throughout all this nonsense of <laughs> questions and answers and time spent editing? Um, and it's just a way for you guys to say, hey, I value what you guys do. I support you. And it means a lot to us. Um, we, you know, are able to get cool beers or whatever we, we want, really, because of you guys' support. And just, it, it means a lot to us. And um, lately, we've had some pretty awesome donations. So, Matt, why don't you spout those uh, fine gentlemen off? Yeah. So, a lot of donations this time around, this week. Yeah. Uh, we have Justo. Boom. He's our regular. Every week for us. He's a regular. Yeah. Uh, we have a new person, Joy. Joy. And another regular, the Fitz. Yep. And KJ in Pittsburgh. Thank you, KJ. Paul, uh, which is AICD99. Thanks, yep. Paul. We don't know what that means, but thanks, Paul. <laughs> justo, Justo again. And the Fitz again. So they doubled up. They're trying to like compete each other or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> They're always two time. Uh, and then they, they, they double tap. They <laughs> donate and double tap. So. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. It means a lot to yeah, us. Yeah, thank you. Again, tonight. Dink. I'm doing this.
Matt's got some uh, seltzer. I have just water. Water. Okay. That works. <laughs> so I was, so talk- I was talking to my cousin and yeah. he's like, dude, I discovered a new liquor store. Well, it's always been there, but he's like, I walked in there and, and the guy has all kinds of nice craft beers and stuff. So I'm going to walk in there mm. and get a bunch of stuff because he's like, man, that's all I go. I go in there. He's got what I need. He's got, you know. Okay. I'm going to check it out and I'll, I'll have something next uh, in two weeks. Sweet, man. Are, are, your, are your liquor stores called ABC stores? Uh, no. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> so in Virginia, they separate. Like they can't sell liquor inside of grocery stores. They can't sell liquor inside of like super stores or anything like that, like markets or anything like that. All so liquor? Liquor stores are always all liquor, any okay. liquor whatsoever. Oh, all right. So in, in grocery stores, they can sell wine and, and beer, but they cannot sell liquor. Oh, you're, ta- you're talking hard liquor. Hard liquor. Gotcha. Yeah. So all of our liquor stores in all of Virginia are called ABC stores. That's just what they're called. A, B, A, B, C. Like the name on, on the That's front? That's it, dude. On the front, A, B, C. So it's a brand. That's the brand. Okay. But uh, they've, they do not sell beer inside of them. Wow. They'll only sell liquor. Like it's literally a store just liquor. That's the only place that you can buy liquor in Virginia is at an ABC store. Uh, over here, grocery stores, uh, they'll sell both beer, wine, and hard liquor. And there's tons of different hard uh, liquor stores. I mean, all kinds. Um, um, even gas stations will sell beer. Uh, yeah, we, I, we have beer at gas stations, but no liquor. No yeah, liquor. I, don't, I don't think there's any hard liquor. Maybe the little bottles. No, I don't think, I don't think so. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've run into different situations in like Delaware where there's like, there, there are like mega alcohol stores. You can get liquor, beer, you know, mixers, all that stuff. But that's, that, that's a, that just does not exist here in Virginia. Dude, we, we went on vacation to Tennessee and yeah. you know, I'm like, Oh man, I should be able to get whiskey everywhere. Mm-hmm. No, you can't. I'm like, where the hell's all the whiskey, man? <laughs> in someone's backyard. You have to walk into the backyard and get yeah. some Tennessee whiskey. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what, what did they have liquor stores too? Like just, uh, well, yeah. Uh, it was just beer and wine, no hard liquor. Um, I just wanted to try some local whiskey or yeah. bourbon or whatever, you know, but, uh, yeah. Hmm. Well, maybe next time. Next time. Tennessee's? Yeah. I've never been there. That's yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> smoky, smoky mountains, man. Yeah. National, we, yeah we went to the national park and all that other stuff. It was fun. You guys ever been to Virginia Beach? Uh, no. Cool. We, it's a we are. Spot. So we were talking in the last episode about all this COVID stuff. I can't, I, I can't wait to take a road trip. Yeah. We usually do one or two a year and we haven't done any because of what's going on. Right. Um, but yeah, I think later this year, maybe in the fall, late summer or the fall, we got to go somewhere, man. So cool, man. Well, I mean, shout out Virginia beach, which is like a big tourist location for Virginia. Okay. If you're on the beach. You can get, you can get an ocean front hotel, nice hotel, top floor, whatever you want to do. Yeah. You'll look out over the ocean to have sand at your feet every morning if you want. Um, they got a boardwalk there. They got stores, shops, all kinds of stuff. So nice. So when we location. so when we do vacations, we try to avoid touristy spots. Okay. Yeah. Understandable. Or, or if we do, we're not like in it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when we went to Tennessee, the Smoky Mountains, that's Gatlinburg. Okay. Very touristy. But what we did is we rented a cabin about a half an hour away that was on a creek on five acres. And there was nobody, dude. Nice. Nobody. Dude. Very um, cool. So that's, that's the kind of stuff we like to do, you know? Yeah. Very cool. Well, um, again, to try to pull you into Virginia... They have places <laughs> like like Yorktown, <laughs> Williamsburg, all on the beach. These are all places that like established the thirteen colonies. Oh, so wow. Virginia is like a very well known space for where a lot of wars took place, mm-hmm. like battles. 
and you can literally visit the grounds that they were battling on and like see buildings with cannons inside of them and all kinds of crazy stuff that's or, crazy. like cannonballs like buried inside the brick wall of a building it's it's pretty cool wow that's interesting yeah so cool otherwise we're definitely going to go to if they do the mama tried show i'll see mm -hmm. you there yeah did, did you get any more info on that yeah so they're not doing it this year this the one that was supposed to be it happened in december so they're like they like brought it super short so it was like it's supposed to be in february or something like that but then they started it in december so 2020 and that was for 2020 obviously so for 2021 there's no information about when it will be yet but we will be going to it okay. so whenever you get information about it if you get it before me we'll try to find if we can't see like an airbnb out there or something or we'll stay at a hotel but i expect you to be there yeah no, well no i mean i don't know where you plan on flying i don't know if you plan on flying to milwaukee or what but i'm right by o'hare Okay. And I can pick your ass up O'Hare, and, and okay. I can drive you to Milwaukee. You know, it's good to uh, know. I, I'm 10, 15 minutes away from O'Hare. Okay. And it's Milwaukee, Milwaukee is an hour and a half. Sweet. It might be cheaper to fly to O'Hare and then drive, you know, rent a car to your destination where I can drive right. you, you know what I'm saying? Versus going to whatever. Right. Just keep Understood. that in mind. Cool. Thank you. It's going to yeah, happen. It's, cool. It's something going to happen. So. Okay, so back to the show. <laughs> uh, so we, we chewed up all the time. Yeah. <laughs> we usually have. So, um, question two, like, right? Yeah, question two. So this will be on you since you placed that mammoth of one on me. This is all you. Yeah, all right. Um, okay, question two. Hi, guys. Yeah. Sorry for being late in my reply to your invitation to send in more tech questions. I need your help related to my 76 CB504 and some issues that I've been having with the running on the engine as well as the lack of charging. Background, I have dismantled and reassembled the bike with the un unvaluable help with the videos uh, on the CB554 that I purchased from Matt. Big thanks. Nice. So yeah, I have videos on this, so he, he picked them up to make the engine run for the next 45 years. The engine was fully refurbished with a lot of new refurbished new and refurbished parts after reassembling the wiring with a new harness and some help from an electrician. Uh, I have no clue about electrics. And to my surprise, I'm not a trained mechanic. The engine did start and ran smoothly and nicely, but now comes the big butt. It does not keep running as smoothly and nicely like that for long. After three to five minutes, the idling so suddenly starts to get rough. Riding the bike, the engine loses power. Obviously, one or two of the cylinders failing to fire after another minute it gets hard to keep the engine on and it stalls and gets hard to start also i noticed that after replacing replace the old mechanical regulator rectifier with a digital one initially i had charging current but then this suddenly stopped and now i do not have charging current uh, besides the electrical issues i had the suspicion that the refurbished carbs could have some jets blocked so i removed and cleaned them as thoroughly as I could. Uh, after refitting everything, no change. Again, easy starting, but no stable running. Also, I noticed that the engine is very sensitive to the position of the choke. Even though I live in tropical Malaysia with con constant uh, temperatures between 26 to 34 degrees C, I cannot close the choke if I do not want the engine to stall. Also, mm -hmm. I noticed that the exhaust coming from cylinders two and three, the lower pipes, emit cold exhaust whereas the upper pipes uh, for one and four emit hot exhaust i use the color tune uh, for cylinders two and three i didn't see any light emissions as if the cylinders did not fire at all whereas the cylinders one and four fire with orange color then i replaced the ignition coils with aftermarket ones including wires and plugs no improvement mm -hmm. spark plugs are new i'm using a dyna s uh, I have no workshop here in Kula Lumpur, and that would help out with solid knowledge. So I hope your advice on this can prove. Uh, I can provide a number of videos illustrating the symptoms through wet transfer or Dropbox. Cheers, Daniel. Wet transfer sounds gross. Yeah. <laughs> I was, it does sound kind of weird. You want to do a wet transfer video feed? <laughs> 
Oh man. So there's, lot, no, there's a lot to unpack here, man. There's a lot going on here. Um, so, I mean, he's pretty much had the whole thing apart engine. Yeah. He's messing with the, uh, harness. He's messing with the charging. Um, so let, let's to not make this answer one hour long. Let's assume he did everything perfect with the motor. Valve okay. adjustment, ignition timing is all spot on. The ignition okay. timing is one of the things that I wanted to be like, well, you should check this, you know, because one in four, there's two different points, blah, 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 blah. Right. There's, yeah. there's, yeah. That was one of the things I wanted to hit on, but let's assume that all of this motor stuff is perfect. And we'll go from there. Shoot. Okay. So we, got, we have good compression, right? Obviously. Yep. It's a fresh good motor. Compression. Okay. Um, fresh motor. He, he installed. Thanks to Matt. Yeah. Um, he installed the Dyna S. And you, you've installed a couple of those, I'm sure. I think maybe two. Yeah. Two, okay. Well, every time I install those, they're, you know, they set up, they, you have the big plate and then the, the little guys for one yeah. and four and two and three. Well, those guys are spot on. If you get one, the other one's pretty good too. You don't have to mess with yeah. it. So it's, uh, that's pretty, it's pretty easy to install that and time it. Um, and the thing runs for a minute. Yeah. Um, but yeah. The, the bigger question is he's not, he's not firing on two cylinders. I mean, he's got cold exhaust on two cylinders. Right. So that's an issue. He has to keep choke on, too, to keep that running. Yeah. So, wait. I, I didn't understand this correctly. I cannot close the choke if I do not want the engine to stall. So, what, what is – I can't – I think what he meant was, like, I can't turn the choke off. Meaning, like, I can't unchoke it without it staying – like, in order to get it to stay running, I have to have the choke on somewhat is what okay. I read from that. So, it's partially on. Yeah. Okay. Um. I mean, nowhere here is he talking about carb sync or right. tuning the carbs. Right. Uh, that's big for, you know, if, if two cylinders are cold or whatever. I mean, it may right. not be balanced. He said right. he went through it the best that he could. Yeah. Which may not be good enough. I mean, you've got you, you to vacuum sync these carbs. Yeah. You know, there's no way around it. Um, but ultimately, you got to get those cylinders firing. Yeah. You know, so that that's that's the main problem uh what do you want to add to this dude i would hit it with starter fluid i mean we we, we know the the age-old trick you know if it's got ignition then if you hit it with starter fluid then it will fire if you've got compression right. and, and ignition so if you hit it and all of a sudden boom two cylinders come to life then you have a fuel delivery aka carb issue i know you went through the carb already but no bike ever should need to have the carb on, I mean, the choke on partially to get it to run an idle for an extended period of time. Yes, bikes that are cold, they need choke on. That's why the choke is there. It's there to help with that startup. But if you're only running on two cylinders, then you're only running on two cylinders. I don't think it's a coil issue. You replace the coils. And we're going to assume that you did the motor perfectly. Valve adjustment is perfect. You know, all that stuff is perfect. Ignition timing, perfect. Because um, we can hit every nail on the head with this when it comes to what it could be. You know, like we're just yeah. guessing. To me, it comes all back to the carburetors. That was the one thing that has been missed thoroughly on this. So with it running or not running, you would hit it with, with uh, uh, starting fluid for those two cylinders and see if yeah. the, the pipes get – See if, if anything it, happens. If anything pops, right? Right, because okay. he, he should hear it. I mean, because it sounds like it's always running on two cylinders. That's what it sounds like to yeah. me. Like, he, he's able to get it to run with choke, boom. It's just like, and it's like barely running. And all of a sudden, I think if you hit it with some starter fluid, it would be like, it'll like maybe skyrocket. You, you know how yeah. that, that happens? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's a good, easy test. Yeah, that's what I would do, man, because um, it sounds like you have a carb issue. That's what, Or your ignition timing is way off. Um which I, I don't think is necessarily the case. Yeah. Um, well, he did say it ran. He said it's it did. It ever ran for like three or four minutes is what, it is, is what I thought. Of yeah. You said. Um, it sounds like it mean, runs smoothly for a little bit. Yeah. 
So, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think you got to look at the carbs. Something's up with that. It's not, they're not balanced. The cylinders aren't getting the, the right fuel and air. Yeah. And therefore they're not firing correctly. Double check it. You can double check it. The ignition timing, if you want, make sure that that two and three, if that's the one that's not firing, is timed correctly. Maybe try throwing an old point, an old point plate on there. I mean, but there's no reason to like go into this thoroughly because we could never, you know, we'll start a conversation that will never end. Yeah, and you know, at the, at this point, change the spark plugs out. Yeah. Uh, or at least swap them. Take take one and four and two and three and swap them. Yeah. See if the problem follows. Uh, follows. Um, yeah. I mean, I think startup fluid is going to be a saving grace. I think that yeah. might tell them a lot. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, his charging issue, though, I don't know. Oh yeah, that. <sighs> um. Not much. He didn't give us too much info. No, he didn't. Like so, as if that wasn't the main problem, but it could be, you know, because if it's if he's got headlight on, brake light on, or he- headlight tail light, running lights on, and he's and the battery's dying, then the coils are not going to get fire, you know. And the charging system that bad. If it's like not charging whatsoever, then the system could be failing because of the charging issue. But he said initially I had charging current, but then suddenly stopped. So he, he, after replacing the old mechanical regulator right to fire, which was a split system um, with a digital one, I don't know what that is. I think he's uh, referring to maybe a solid state one, which okay. is just the combined unit. Yes. Yeah. Like a okay. new, new style one. I mean, what else would yeah. you put in there? Okay. I had charging current, but then something didn't. So I don't know if. It's something his wiring is wrong. Because if he's saying that he did, I also noticed that after replacing the old mechanical rectifier regulator with a digital one, I initially had current before with the mechanical regulator rectifier, and then now I didn't with the new digital one. That's not like a wiring problem. Like he's wired something wrong. Yeah. Which I can't help you with too much because it all comes back to you, which is like, Understanding wherever you got that from, whether it was the clearance aisle at 7-Eleven or, you know, someone who is comparable and who sells good, good sets, good kits, which I don't, I don't know of any, unless you do, Matt. Oh, man, there was a site. Uh, I, I got it. I'd have to look it up. Um, if we remember, we'll put it in the description. Yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I'm getting um, tired. <laughs> yeah, me too. So um, it sounds like you wired something wrong. So get get back to us, Daniel. We'd love to hear back from you for sure about what you find. But I think what we've told you is is enough for you to get the ground running. Yeah. Maybe so, be- bench, this, bench sink the carbs. Yeah. And then put some gauges on it and then right get on. back to us. Cool. So, question three from Joy. This is one of the guys who donated to us. Yeah. So we'll gladly answer his <laughs> email. Now, um, let me just, I don't know if you read through all his emails, but his, his first one is stating the problem and it's very long. And uh, then this the is second one. one, he says, okay. I fixed it. So may, I don't know if you want to paraphrase or not. So it's, it's, Matt, I think you should paraphrase this because okay. it sounds like you answered him back and helped him out. No, I haven't, but you know, I'll, I'll, oh. I'll, I'll do it. Well, he said that. No. He th- okay. So no, Wait, one what do you mean? no, no. He, he sent one email after the other. Oh, okay. so he replied back to his own email later on. <laughs> okay. And said, uh, okay, well then I, then I can paraphrase it. Yeah. Yeah. So he had, uh, this is joy. Joy again. Thank you for the, uh, for the, the donation. Um, uh, great show. Um, been learning a lot from both of your YouTube videos. He has a, uh, a non-starting CB650, um, which he's quoted as a pandemic project, which I love the, that, that terminology for it. Um, he did some, some engine work to it. 
Um, as far as he said, I was able to remove the cylinder head and replace the valve seals and lap the valves as well to perform a general cleanup, um, the clean off, you know, carbon deposits and oil gasket material. Um, the issue that he was having was um, when he got it back together, torquing everything down according to the climber manual. Um, to my relief, it fired up, he said. However, I still experienced some blue smoke. So he he's, has a bike that's smoking. So this time, what he wanted to do was go in after the cylinder and um, see what's going on down inside of there. Because if it's smoking all the time, it's likely going to be some type of ring situation. So the biggest issue that he had was trying to get the cylinder off of the engine. He, I mean, he tried everything. He pulled, he busted the jackhammer out. He had his wife helping him out there. His dog was helping him out there and trying to get the cylinder off of the motor, and he could not get it. He tried heat, everything, wedges. He tried hammering straight into the side of the motor with, with, a, with a flat screwdriver, and it just was not working out. So he sent us all of that. Um, he also has uh, the carbs on pod filters. Um, it seems to be running okay. He says he has a couple of slight hesitations at higher highway speeds, which could be a main jet issue. Would you agree, Matt? Highway speed issue, pod filters. It could be. Could be needle or main, yeah. Yeah, needle or main. Um, he, but he's not too concerned about that right now. It was just a matter of getting this thing to back together, obviously, or apart and then back together. So he said, this is, was the update email he sent us. So he said, so update, I got impatient and went and grabbed the materials to make the contraption to lift the cylinder head off of the block and it was a success so congratulations joy turns out the gasket between the head and block was uh on really well the only thing i can think of is that caused it was the spray on gasket maker i used when replacing the valve seals i'm not sure what we're talking about there because if he's replacing the valve seals he's had the head off so why is the gasket material i don't know um, anyway, the video helped a ton and got me back on schedule. Thanks again for all the content you guys pump out. Definitely keeps me motivated. Thank you, Joy. So, I mean, this is like a, this is like a story with a happy ending to me, you know, because he got the cylinder off. Because, I, I mean, he tried everything that I would have suggested. He tried yeah. heat. He tried all different yeah. types of things. Um, a rubber hammer bashing that motor apart. And yeah. a lot of times it's because, like, what I've found is – it's usually because of the, of the dowel pins. The dowel pins rust. It's like a different metal compared to the cylinder and head or cylinder and engine. And they rust because of moisture over the years. I mean, we're talking like 30, 40 years. And then dowel pins just like weld themselves to that metal. And you can't get it apart until you build a contraption. <laughs> yeah, and he submitted pictures and basically he kind of like just – Pull, he made like this plate and it was like a puller and it just yanked the, the head off or something like that. So that was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sending the pictures, Joy. Um, and it was awesome that you got back to us and let you know the success that you got. So put new rings on it. Make sure you, you double check the uh, cylinder to piston clearance. Make sure it's not out of spec. The ring end gap, even with new rings, make sure that the ring end gap is good. Um, so you don't you know, have you're just dealing with a worn out cylinder versus replacing the rings. I won't get you too far. That will actually get you to or a piston slap is what it's called. Um, if you're not careful. So I, that's my two cents on that. I mean, it sounds like he know he knows more than most. Uh, yeah, doing. here he he said he's from Joliet, Illinois, and that's like 50 miles from here. So and uh, there's a couple. Oh, cool. There's a couple uh, motocross tracks there and, and whatnot, Ooh. and we used to ride there. So, um, yeah, I'm familiar with Joliet. So, um, actually, Wait, you know this guy? I don't know him. I, I know oh. this, the town he's from. Got it. He okay. said, I'm formerly from Joliet, Illinois. Okay. He's like, well, I saw his name is Joy. I was like, maybe his name is Joy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But, okay. Um, it makes sense. Um, but anyway, like, you know, I've had some heads that were on there pretty good. Um, yeah. and you know, you can hit them with the hammer, but you want to hit those fins straight on. If you go up at an angle, you're going to bust those fins. Yep. And then it's going to look like crap. Um, like crap. on this CB 750, uh, what I ended up doing is they have the pockets on the ends. Okay. You know, the, the yep. little, mm -hmm. so if this is the head and, uh, the cylinder, sir, I took a screwdriver in, jammed it right in the pocket and it, it wedged in there and it popped it loose and it didn't yeah. even damage anything the surface no, yeah didn't even 
nick them or anything and i was like wow. yeah they're like they have like a little like machined yep gully inside of both of the engine and the cylinder yeah um and you can do exactly what matt said on some of them they don't where you're yeah. just like you, you gotta almost dick it up you know to get that thing apart yeah so i i try not to bend the screwdriver up and down because then right. that'll gouge the hell out of it and whoever was working on this bike was using a screwdriver and gouged okay. the hell out of it and i had to hone those surfaces smooth and knock yeah. those in. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah anyway anyways okay. question four. Oh, also enjoy and enjoy the beer money yeah thanks joy thank you thank you so much Question four. Uh, Question four is from Dick. <laughs> Sorry. What's up, Dick? Hey, from Dick, from <laughs> Dick from South Florida. Um, my rides are a 75 Yamaha XS650, which was a total teardown restoration, but not the engine or respoking. Maybe next one I'll go for it. Uh, then he's got a 2014 Triumph Street Triple, great bike. And then a 97 Honda Helix, my old personal ride approaching quickly. <laughs> Uh, love them. My fourth one. He said, had, "My old person ride, not personal." Oh, my <laughs> old, there, oh, I'm like, in there. I'm like, <laughs> but he looks looks like an old person ride. That's that's why. I'm I'm just, okay, I, I, I was reading that. I'm like, that didn't make sense when I just said. <laughs> love them. My fourth one. I end up tr I ended up trading for something uh, only to end up getting another. This one I'll keep. Uh, have you guys done an episode on restoring an older bike, which may include things such as powder coating, chrome work, dealing with rust, determining if a frame is straight, how to straighten it, when to use aftermarket parts versus OEM? Mm -hmm. uh, how about purchasing a used bike, when to walk away, bartering, uh, replacing handlebar grips, plastic welding for dealing with broken plastic parts versus expensive replacement? Uh, really enjoy your show. Maybe a list maybe a little less bantering on the outset um. <laughs> yes <laughs> hope to build the vapor blaster once i sell my ac company hey -o. is it that expensive you need to sell an ac company to build a vapor blaster matt <laughs> <laughs> no uh this guy wants some 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 juicy information all in one all in one content yeah no no question just su suggestions i guess on, uh, juicy on juicy information so so first ahead, well yeah. first off do you have any videos on the stuff that you mentioned i don't have any that are that are free so and inside, inside the membership it's it's pretty cool because people can ask things like this and then i will respond with the video like people come, they email me, they'll log into the private private Facebook group and they can ask me questions like, Hey, like, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on that? And like, that's what it's there for is like, I can give them my best advice. I don't have any videos on powder coating, chrome work, dealing with rust, deforming frame, uh, determining frame to be straight, how to straighten it. I have nothing on that, but I'll be happy to answer stuff like that. I mean, I there's one there's one member awesome guy Mike Reed him and his wife have been amazing from the membership and ever since Mercy he started really he bought a I mean a completely roached locked up CB 350F right so the four cylinder 350 roached and that thing was like under a piece of carpet I mean it was just like it was just nasty out out in someone's field. And he was like, what should I do about this? Oh, and he sent me pictures and I just like put them up on a PowerPoint. And I was like, let's talk about it. This is going to mean this much money. This is going to mean this much money. And I mean, we kind of like walked through it um, and gone through the whole process. But I mean, as far as like powder coating and chrome work and all this stuff, it's going to be like important for the location that you're in, A, because Unless you know how to cr do chrome, Matt, um, or powder coat, you're going to be sending it off. Yeah, and, it's it's a farmed out service. Yeah, and, and like that's what I've done with the 350. That's behind me. I'm not going to powder coat it. I'm not going to get things chromed. Getting things chromed is very expensive, and I'm not going to learn how to do it in my own garage. So most of that stuff is done out outsourcing. I mean – yeah, I, I mean, know. you know, if you need something painted, then then strip everything down and take it yeah. to to get powder coated. I don't know what. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, even going back to the membership, Mike 
um, asked like, because every now and then, every couple of months, I'll be like, hey, what do you guys want to learn? You know what I mean? And they'll be like, I want to learn about this. I want to learn about suspension. I want to learn about um, restoring a bike from bolt to bolt. I want to learn about, you know, how to, like this guy just asked, purchasing a used bike when to walk away bartering. I did that on a live stream already, but I did a video on that for Mike. I was like, this is what I look at when I go to look at a used bike, you know? Um, so there's things that I do like this inside the membership, but I mean, replacing handlebar grips, I, this is very, uh, I, I don't know. It's, I don't have anything like that. I can just give him right now, but I, what I, what, what I can offer for this question is like the membership that I have that I, that I offer people allows things for like this to live and for it to be talked about. That's all I can share. Sure. Is there like a forum? inside your membership can people talk to each other or are they just talking I mean, to you yeah yeah so we we have we have a private facebook group oh okay so all members can live inside of there i have a community forum but it's it's i've found that it's more difficult for me to get back to it on time because of the extent that it goes and I mean, with facebook i mean even if you make a fake account on facebook and join a group it's so easy to post videos. It's so easy to talk. It's so easy to get notifications. It's so easy to yeah. like just be involved in. Sure. So I'm thinking about kind of doing away with that community forum because it's not and it doesn't function like like I would like it to. But we have a private Facebook group, and I have uh, you can get in like once you get the membership, I give you a link to that private group, and you you know join them. Yeah, you know, I just started one for the Vapor Blaster stuff. Cool. So anyone who has purchased plans gets a link and awesome. we just talk about if they need build support yeah. or, you know, just any questions. And, and Super man, helpful. And what's cool is seeing other people's builds. Like people yeah. from all over the world just building <laughs> crazy stuff, man. So I, I get that. That's cool. But that's my best advice for this guy. I mean, we're not going to walk through every one of these questions. It's just... Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean... I, I guess I was just asking if you had content around this. I don't yeah. have any content. I have some on replacing grips on an MX bike, and I did it with, oh, an, air, with an air compressor. You, yep. you ever you ever blow into grips and they just oh yeah boop. man, it blows up. Bloop. Yeah, <laughs> and putting them on that, that's like the best thing in the world, man. Yeah, <laughs> instead of using your mom's hairspray or whatever, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, but uh. Yep. That, that's all I have. Uh, but these are good topics and I'll, you know, in the very future, good topics, you know, especially yeah. purchasing a used bike. There's, yeah. there's a lot of stuff we can, or you can, uh, do around that, but absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dick, uh, I'm not trying to bash your questions. These are brilliant questions. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I have to add to it. So, so we stop yawning. We shouldn't end this. <laughs> Dude, I just woke up too early today. Had oh, a, a, you know, played in the snow, played yeah, in the man. snow. So I'm just beat, man. And because of my internet, we ended it. I, I, I feel like we could have ended it before 10, but yeah. it, because of my internet, it's just the way it is what it is. So had, had some technical difficulties. We had some tef technical difficulties. And we're yeah. both tired. I've been painting all day. So <laughs> um, that's always fun. But. Anything you want to plug before we wrap this up, Matt? No, I think I talked enough. Okay. This episode or whatever. Cool. So, uh, yeah. No, I'm good. Awesome. Well, check out um, howtomotorcyclerepair.com for all of your motorcycle needs, as well <laughs> as the, <laughs> the Motorcycle MD, um, as well as um, if you guys want to check out some Grip Clean, I'm sending this stuff to Matt for him to try yeah. it out. It's awesome. awesome stuff. In the, in the description, we'll post any links to videos, products, um, stuff that we support and we genuinely believe in that will help you guys out, um, just like Grip Clean. So if you want to get 10% off, I have a link there for you. Matt's got some awesome stuff going out. Be sure to stay close to his YouTube channel as well as his website. He'll let you guys know. If you have a mailing list, I'm sure yep. that'd be the best place to um, get the insight, the, the DL, as they say, um, on stuff that's coming out. So. Until awesome. next Thank time, you. enjoy. Uh, uh, no, not enjoy. Email. <laughs> Email. Oh, yeah, that's right. Askbrokenmoto uh, at yep. gmail.com. Send yeah. us your information. Awesome. Thanks for closing that out, man, because I was just. I'm, I'm just trying to get this out of here quick. Yeah. Yeah. I got to piss. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. All right. all right. Thank you all. Yeah. Later. Later. <laughs>